Hello everybody, welcome to Liam's Library. Um, once again, we're going to be continuing with Night Shift. Um, this is going to be a nice quick review. Um, even though we're talking about probably my second favourite story in this whole collection. So that's a big deal. <clears throat> you know, we've talked about vampires, we've talked about monstrous killer rats. Um, now... We're going to talk about aliens, and we're going to talk about murderous aliens um, from from Venus. Sounds a bit over the top, doesn't it? Well, this story is called I Am The Doorway. And like I always tell you, Night Shift was the first book I ever picked up. Children of the Corn and Sometimes They Come Back were probably the two first things I ever read by Stephen King before I picked up It and then Carrie. I Am The Doorway. Doesn't that, doesn't that title just just really uh, pique your interest? I am the doorway? What does he mean by that? Well, when we flip to our first page of I am the doorway, we meet this astronaut and his friend Richard sitting on the porch in Florida where they watch over the Florida Gulf, uh, sorry, the Gulf of Mexico, isn't it? I'm from Australia. I wouldn't really know the geography that well. I digress. Um, this astronaut ex-astronaut, retired astronaut, and his friend Richard are sitting there having a discussion while they're looking over these sand dunes, um, and in the distance, this ex-astronaut can watch all the rockets take off at Cape Canaveral, somewhere like that, but he's telling him a story. He's telling him how he murdered somebody. He's also telling him that he is the doorway, all right? So this astronaut is talking to his friend Richard. While he's talking to his friend Richard, both of his hands are heavily bandaged, and and we, we're not, it's not first person, well, is it first person? It is first person. Yeah, Richard and I. So you never find out our astronaut's name, he is the paraplegic astronaut, and he has been going through some shit. Um, he's trying to convince Richard that he murdered a, a young man and buried him out in the dunes. He's also trying to convince Richard there is something very science fiction-y going on with his life at the moment. Something is happening for him. He is turning into some kind of a monster. Now, Richard doesn't believe this. He's very interested. They're both sitting there smoking cigarettes. He wants to know. So he's like, let's start from the beginning. So now our, our narrator, uh, our protagonist, starts to tell us his story. Now, five years prior, he was on a manned mission to Venus with one other astronaut. And it went off without a hitch, really. There was a couple of mid-flight things that they had to deal with. And then they went around Venus three times or five times? Four times. Four times. Taking photos and taking video and just monitoring the planet. And they dropped a, you know, a, a bloody a, a thing, a, a receptor or something into the planet to just check out how fast the storm was going in there. 600 mile per hour winds. The sensor disappeared when it hit rock bottom. Anyway, <clears throat> the problem happened when they returned. The flight to Venus was called the Saturn Six or something like that. And what happened was their parachute just failed. So after being further than any person had been in the 70s, uh, traveling around Venus's orbit and coming back to Earth, it was a failed parachute that fucked them up. And they come crashing down to Earth. The other astronaut, Corey, I think his name is, he dies. Now, our main character is now paraplegic. They give him a... NASA gives him this huge uh, pension. They give him a wheelchair, and they give him this nice big home in Florida. Now, we fast forward five years to our character explaining to Richard what's happened to him. And he explains it that one day it just happens all of a sudden. Just, just like turning on a light switch. His hands get itchy. His fingers get itchy, maddeningly itchy. The way King describes it, you feel like scratching your own hands, but you're holding this book, so it's kind of difficult. You can hear my dogs outside the room. They're like, their nails and their claws. I wish they'd go away, but whatever. You'll hear it on the video. Whatever. I had to get this video done. So, um, sorry about the background noise. <clears throat> um, so, his, his hands start itching. He rings his doctor. His doctor's unavailable. Um... So that night, he can't get a hold of his doctor. He goes home and he picks up this medical journal off his, off his shelf. And he's going to read it. 
But it's so vague, this itch in his hands could be anything. He's not thinking it could have been something that happened while he was in deep space. Certainly not thinking that. However, he sits down and he holds the book. He sits back with his eyes shut. And then all of a sudden it dawns on him. He's still looking at the book. His eyes are shut in his head, but he's still looking at the book. And the book looks scary and fourth dimensional and warped. And it's because when he looks down at his hands, he sees that all these eyes have poked themselves out of his fingertips. These eyes are dilating and pushing through the soft flesh of his fingers and what they see terrifies them. So he's seeing from his own point of view, but he's also seeing from these new eyes on his fingers point of view. And what they see is terrifying and dark and scary and alien to them because they're obviously not from here. But that's not what makes him scream. What makes him scream is, he looks into his own face and he sees a monster. That's what makes him scream. So <clears throat> he keeps them bandaged up. He keeps them bandaged up for a while and he goes about his life. He's obviously going through some kind of crazy traumatic period, as you would if you'd just grown eyes out of your fucking fingertips. Then he comes across this young man who walks across the, the beach near where he lives and, and, you know, and, and gets a metal detector and picks up coins from lazy tourists. And then all of a sudden, he's holding his hands out to this boy. And this boy's like, what the fuck is this paraplegic one? And, but he hasn't bandaged his hands. And they want him. And they make him stand up. And he's, he's, he's a paraplegic. So he can't walk. But he stands up like some kind of creepy robotic marionette. And goes stalking across the sand dunes after this boy. And somehow murders him. Blows his head into a million pieces. The actual description in there is as if a grenade was planted on the inside of his skull. Graphic, man, graphic. And then, next thing he knows, he's sitting on his porch again. These aliens, these aliens from Venus, whatever, it took five years for them to gestate into his system, are now opening this doorway from his hands more and more, and they're getting more power over him. He'll find himself standing in his kitchen over everyday option uh, objects, showing them spatulas, cans of baked beans, anything, and they just look so bizarre and alien to these monsters living inside his hands, gazing across this portal of, of multi-dimensional space to see into our world. And he's trying to tell Richard this. So they go out and they look, him and his friend Richard, his friend Richard doesn't believe him, so they go out into the dunes to try to find this boy that he's buried. Now, Richard digs for a long time and they can't find a body. And he's like, man, there's no body here. There's no boy here. And he's like, man, they must, Richard, they, ma they made me move him. I, I mustn't have known anything about it. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, you're, you're a quadruple, you're a paraplegic. <clears throat> you can't move around. You can't walk around. You can't move bodies. You can't dig. You can't walk around your kitchen showing your hands to certain objects. It doesn't work that way. And Richard's about to give up on his friend, thinks he's full of shit. And all of a sudden he's like, our main character just goes, fuck it. And there's thunder coming over from, from the gulf. And as he unwraps his hands, he's like, listen, if I show you these things and then you're in danger, you have to run, Richard. And so he shows Richard his hands and there are the eyes and they're looking at him. And Richard sees them and straight away he's terrified. And our main character starts to think in his head, how did I, how was I friends with this Richard asshole for that long? How did I... How did I even live near him for that long? Like, what a what a weird, creepy looking man. And then it's like, then he realizes that's these monsters in his hands thinking that. They're going to kill Richard. So he's like, run, Richard, run. And Richard runs and he bounds across the dunes. He tries to get away. He really does try to get away. But lightning comes out of the sky and this paraplegic main character guy just flashes his hands in the air using the power through his hands of these Venetian space monsters, and they strike Richard down with this big uh, flash of lightning and blow him up into pieces. The next thing our main character knows, he's just sitting on the porch. There's no doom buggy, there's no Richard. They've used him again. They've murdered someone else, and the body's guaranteed to be missing. So he looks down at his hands and he hasn't bandaged them. And all the eyes are all glazed. Like, they're all just like, they're asleep. They've exhausted themselves. So he doesn't waste any time. He knows what he has to do. <clears throat> he sets a big fire in the fireplace and just drenches his hands in kerosene. And that wakes them up. And they wake up. 
he only just makes it to the fireplace where he burns his hands up to cinders. Burns them away. So that's cool, right? So that's that's your story, and it takes place so quick. So, like, you know, I, I do a bit of writing myself, but it's quite hard for me to make a t story that spans 12 years fit comfortably and neatly into a 14-page short story, but that's king for you. That's, you know, he can do that with ease. He can give you a, you know, a, an eight 900-page book that takes place in one night. I'm thinking of desperation here. <clears throat> but... Something that takes place in seven years, 14 pages. Plus, you get the feel of it. You are happy with this story. So there is, an, there is an ending. There is an ending to this story. And it's seven years later. And nobody knows where Richard went, his friend who was murdered. They think he must have run off with some woman. Um, that young boy who disappeared, well, they were like, well, shit, he was all over the place at the time. He could have just been, he could have been kidnapped on the mainland. He could have been taken anywhere. Nobody blames our, our astronaut our doorway, because he is the doorway, of course. But he's burnt his hands off now. Yet he's still typing. He's managed to get these fancy hooks. And uh, and it took him a while for the first couple of years that they pained him really greatly. But now he's managed to type. He can even tie his own fucking shoelaces. How's that? And you know what? It's not even going to be hard for him to pull the trigger of this shotgun. Because he's going to kill himself. Because it started again three weeks ago. He has... A big triangle of 12 golden eyes on his chest. So they waited another seven years after he burned his hands off. And then they came back. And it just leaves you there hanging. It leaves you there hanging. Now, I'm just going to say, um, you know, lightning strikes, alien ge gestation, murderous creatures, multidimensional monsters, and a nameless astronaut... You know, just before he blows his face off, he's writing to Congress saying, you know, maybe space travel isn't where we should be spending our money. Maybe it could be spent elsewhere. Because do we really want to know what's out there? If we go out there, it reminds me, reminds me of um, his other horror story, um, Home Delivery, you know, where space isn't really explained. It's just there are things out there and who knows how our human body is going to fucking be affected by them. We're better off staying put, maybe. Anyway, um, this was never made into a movie. It was never made into a Twilight Zone episode. It was never made into any kind of short story film. And I think it's definitely worthy of a horror movie, of a of a 95-minute horror movie. Definitely, I think so. So anyway, that's it. And um, next up, I don't even have to look. I'm pretty sure I know what's next. It's The Mangler. It's The Mangler. My friend Fatty loves the story of The Mangler. He even likes the movie. It's got Robert England and Freddy Krueger in it. Um, so, I, I've done Eye in the Doorway. Please, if you want me to review something, you're probably going to have to wait until I finish Night Shift because I'm going through this till it's over. But if you want me to review something, leave it in the comments. Um, tell me if you agree or don't agree. And hit like and subscribe. And tune in really soon when I do the manga. I might just do it in the next couple of days because I've been hanging to read it again. I don't think I've read it since I was in my 20s. So let's do the mangler about a haunted fucking washing machine. That's Stephen King for you. All right, read some great books, watch some even better fucking movies, look after one another, and take care. Bye.